Job boards. For years, pundits have proclaimed the death of job boards. Tell that to Indeed. Hi, this is Peter Clayton. Job boards are very much alive, and on this Industry Insider edition of Total Picture Media, we'll check in on the health of job boards with the job board doctor, Jeff Dickey Chasens, a veteran of the job board publishing and e-learning industries. Jeff was the original marketing director for Dice.com, growing it from seven million to 65 plus million in three years. He has worked with over 550 job boards and HR related sites over the past 20 years in almost every sector, including finance, technology, education, healthcare, sales and marketing, energy, and specific geographic regions. If you're at all involved in job boards or have attended TA Tech, ERE, and other industry trade shows and conferences, hey, remember them? Chances are you know Jeff and have seen him speak. He has just released his 2020 Job Boards Trends Survey, which brings him back to Total Picture Media. That's good. Well, Jeff, it's really great to see you again. So um, you, you, you said that you're in Iowa before we started recording, and you've had one hell of a summer. So uh, just kind of update us on what's going on in in your piece of the world out there. We have seen a big impact of of the pandemic on the industry that I work in, the job board and recruiting industry. So that's had some impact. And then, uh, as I was telling you earlier, um, we had a derecho hit Iowa, and uh, it's essentially a land-based hurricane. And apparently, I just saw yesterday in the paper, it's on track to be the most expensive land-based weather event in history. Let's get to the topic of why we uh, decided to do this little Zoom video today. Mm -hmm. And that's because your uh, job board trend survey was just published. So give us some background. Um, This this survey started um, about a decade ago because um, I was frustrated as a consultant in the industry that there wasn't really a good source of of, uh, of data from uh, job board operators and recruiting site operators about what was going on, you know, from their perspective, you know, was business good, business bad? What what were they doing to try to keep employers happy and so on? So I said, well, you know, I I know a lot about surveys. Um, I administered dozens of them over my career. And so I sent one out and it was uh, well received. And so I've been doing one every year since. so this year uh, for 2020, we had um, about 128 respondents and they basically came from all over the world. The only place that we didn't get response from was Central America, um, but we got you know lots of response from the EU and the UK and uh, Southeast Asia and Australia and, and of course uh, the US and Canada. The, um, the Typical survey, uh, what I try to do is, is I ask some questions about some sort of baseline stuff like, um, you know, what kind, of, what kind of site are you? You know, are you a niche site? Are you an aggregator? Are you a general site? Um, you know, or are you a sourcing site? Um, and I ask them uh, some information about, you know, where are they operating? You know, are you worldwide? Are you focusing just in, in a particular area? Um, I'll ask them about questions about, you know, roughly, you know, what range of revenue do you produce? Um, and then, you know, what are the services you offer? And then this year, I um, asked some questions about the effect of the pandemic, because obviously it's had a big, big effect on all businesses out there. Um, and, you know, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're tied to the hiring environment. And the hiring environment has been um, volatile, to say the least. So I asked some questions about how that's affected the, their business. And that, you know, it's been, it's been interesting. And, you know, there was, there's no surprise that um, COVID-19 uh, pandemic has had a negative effect on the job board industry in the sense that, you know, for the, you know, for essentially since February, uh, the the business has gone down for for these folks, but the flip side of it is um, they have seen a rise in uh, business activity since um, the, in the last thirty days or so, and which I think somewhat tracks with how people are doing in general. But you know, in 
I'd say in the neighborhood of uh, almost 40%, uh, well, actually more like 60% have seen increases in revenue in the last um, 30 days. So that's a good sign. Um, you know, the question I didn't ask, which would be, would have been interesting is vis-a-vis -vis where you were before the pandemic, you know, how much has your revenue come back? Um, mm -hmm. And that, that'll be a question for next year, maybe. Yeah. And I, I also, I wonder what kind of jobs these are. Are these all like uh, Amazon warehouse jobs that are getting posted or what, uh, you know, what level are they? And also, um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of what the job boards have had to deal with now is remote work and virtual work. And um, a lot of the jobs that are being marketed, I would assume, are for virtual positions. So traditionally, a, you know, a, a job rec would have the title of what the job was and then the city and where the job needed to be. And I'm wondering if the city is being wiped out of these job recs. Well, I mean, there's there's absolutely no doubt that there's been an increase in uh, positions that, you know, traditionally you would have gone into an office for like, you know, a sales job or something. And now they're being um, hired as a remote position. Uh, tech is another category that's like that. Um, but the reality is um, a lot of job boards focus on jobs that have to be done in person, like uh, healthcare jobs, for example, uh, home care. Um, you know, you mentioned warehouse jobs, delivery jobs. Um, you know, there's just a lot of jobs where the uh, workers don't have the the option of mm -hmm. working remotely, and so those those kinds of listings have, if anything, grown. Um, you know, there's one one uh, job board that I talked to that. Um, focuses specifically on the entry-level market, and their business has just exploded because uh, some of their top clients include companies like Amazon and Target. Um, so, you know, they've just been running to try to meet the demand from these these employers. Yeah, it, it seems like there's, there's a new job classification, which is called essential worker, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So are, are you seeing the same level of disruption in job boards as in the rest of the TA tech industry? Um, I don't know if I'd call it disruption um, so much as I'd say it's a, it, there's a calling effect going on right now. It's very similar to what I saw in 2008, where um, mm. sites that were in sort of marginal situations to begin with um, are you know, having to shut down, um, and sites that were, you know, in great shape and maybe had to do some retrenching. I mean, one of the, one of the things that I asked is I said, you know, what have you done in response to the effects of the pandemic? And the, um, the, the second top, second uh, most popular thing that they've done is they've allowed salespeople to make deals, you know, that they wouldn't normally do. Or the, and they've also given away um, products uh, for free. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are behaviors that you typically see when you're in a recession and companies are just trying to maintain their market share. Um, what I haven't seen is um, uh, the same rate of entry into the market that I was seeing, you know, over the last three or four years, you know, where there were, you know, I felt like, you know, whenever I do my news roundups for my blog, I was always writing about, you know, this company got funding and this company got funding and this one's launching and this one's growing and this one's buying. Um, that's continuing, but I'd say the level, you know, is dropped back considerably. But, you know, when you, when you say disruption, I, that's not really what I'm seeing. I, I'd say, you know, consolidation, calling, that's, that's what looks like more to me. Does, uh, does Indeed rule the job board wor world? Uh, well, yes and no. <laughs> I mean, you know, they've had their, uh, their pain too. I think if I remember correctly, their, uh, their listing count dropped, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 30%. Um, you, you may know that better than me. Um, and Glassdoor, you know, which is right. essentially the same company has similar, uh, effects. Um, but they're definitely still, you know, they're the big board out there now. They've, um, 
and they continue to be the big board. Um, I, you know, so yeah, I guess you can, you can say they still rule, but you know, the reality is the other big board out there that doesn't get as much, uh, press because it's not viewed as a traditional job board is LinkedIn and, you know, and LinkedIn, uh, continues to do well and Mm -hmm. be strong and benefit from the fact that it's owned by Microsoft. And, I really see when I, you know, one of the things that I look at is, uh, you know, we're we're both sitting here in the U.S., so we tend to often have a U.S. centric view of the of the business. But, you know, half of my clients are overseas, and when I look at overseas markets, uh, which is where a lot of the growth in the job board industry is, uh, what I see is uh, indeed is in a much less dominant position in most of the overseas markets than LinkedIn is. Hmm. Um, and typically there are, there are sites in, in those other markets that can compete successfully with Indeed. Um, so, you know, I, I have no crystal ball. I don't know what it'll look like in two or three years um, other than I don't think they're going anywhere. So <laughs> Yeah, I don't think so either. And, and you know, the um, the LinkedIn thing is really interesting because, and, and I'm sure that I'm not unique in this. I mean, every time I log into LinkedIn, I get served up some job posting, mm-hmm. right? Yep, yep. You may be interested in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so with their reach and again, with Microsoft's money, I'm sure that they are going to become even more uh, of a critical factor to job boards and i'm i'm wondering where google you know and google jobs fits into this whole puzzle well you know it's kind of funny um you know the big news of course was that the uh the uh, u.s government um filed suit against google you know antitrust Mm -hmm. um yesterday and or, or I, I, maybe they filed the intention. I'm not sure, but I think you know what we saw happen in Europe uh, when they got pushback from the government is that suddenly this product they had called Google Hire, which was you know was well received and becoming dominant with, among small businesses, they yanked off the market um, because you know basically they didn't want the headache that was associated with having it, you know, that was right. at least, and, and I think, um, you know, Google for jobs may be less important to them at this point. And depending on what happens in the courtrooms, we may see less of a focus, um, from them, um, on that, which means of course that they'll, it'll be less of an impact on the industry. It, it's really, it's, truly hard for me to say. I mean, I think the, the one thing that they probably don't want to do is try to start monetizing it heavily um, because that just opens them up to a bunch of more legal action, you know, coming right. from all the competitors. So, right. And what, what impact is GDPR having not only in the uh, EU and European markets, but in the U S um, you know, I don't really think it's had a lot of impact beyond the initial sort of figuring out how to comply with it. Right. You know, the, 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 companies... the original, holy shit. Now we've got to deal with this, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, once you get past that moment um, and then you actually figure out what you need to do, um, it does not, you know, my, I've talked to a lot of clients that, that operate in the EU and, you know, they say, you know, you get, you just make the changes, you get used to it, and off you go. Um, a lot of it will depend on, you know, if over time uh, enforcement becomes really aggressive or they add additional regulations um, to the framework. So, Yeah, it, it seems like personal privacy in Europe is uh, far more rigorously monitored than it is here in the United States? Um, I think it is at this point. Um, I think that, uh, you know, some of the things that Facebook has done uh, is going to increase the desire to 
um, at the legislative level to, have, to pass some more uh, privacy restrictions on what they can and can't do. And that'll ripple down to the job boards as well. But, um, you know, how long that takes, I don't really know. You know, if there's a, if there's a new administration in Washington um, in, in November, it's quite likely that, that something could happen within the next couple of years. Um, if it's the same administration, then I, I doubt anything will. So what is your survey saying about the impact of programmatic? Well, you know, I don't ask the question directly um, uh-huh. about uh, what I do ask is I say, you know, what um, what do you offer your clients, you know, in terms of services? And so when I ask them about uh, is, you know, is programmatic one of those things that you offer? Um, it's it's been for the last couple of years, it's been, you know, 20 to 25 percent of the respondents say, yeah, we're offering that right now. Um, and then, you know, anecdotally, when I talk to clients, um, they, you know, they, they tip up, you know, most of my clients that I work with directly are, are, uh, niche sites. Uh, mm-hmm. So they tend to be sort of small to medium sized job boards. Most of them, you know, are not generating more than maybe 30 or $40 million a year. Um, so those, those companies are, usually using programmatic to extend reach for their clients and um, possibly to acquire more candidates depending on what they're doing. And, you know, at this point, it's sort of settled into uh, more of a tool for them. It's not something that's taking away business. Um, I suspect that the story is different when you're at the Indeed level, you know, um, or even the next level down from that. Um, But that's... That's just a guess on my part. I don't really know. Right. You know, maybe we should define what programmatic is for those folks that are watching this that aren't so versed in the job board industry. Sure. Programmatic advertising is basically something that's uh, that was essentially brought over from the consumer ad market where you um, are giving you're giving a bunch of instructions to a program saying, you know, I. I want to buy uh, exposure for this type of ad on this type of site, and I'm willing to pay this much money or up to this much money, depending on what time. You know, it can be fairly complex because ultimately the computer is going to be making the decisions based on the instructions that you give to them. And then that information gets dumped in. Uh, Your vendor typically will have a network of sites that they can uh, put the ads out on. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, you, you get your ad exposed on a variety of different places. Um, and, you know, one offshoot of this is, uh, retargeting. If you've ever, you know, like <laughs> I made the mistake the other day of, of going and looking at a woodworking site because, you know, I'm a woodworker for fun uh-huh. and, uh, you know, by God for the next two weeks, all I saw were woodworking ads on every single site I went to, you know, <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's, it's sort of an offshoot of that uh, programmatic. Exactly, uh, exactly. So, um, you know, back back to the, the discussion of, of the niche sites. It seems to me that niche sites are either doing like really, really well, like the niche sites that are in healthcare, mm-hmm. or like blowing up, like the niche sites that are in the restaurant or hospitality industry. Right. Absolutely. I mean, there's certain segments where there is absolutely no doubt that that things are ugly. And, you know, any any sort of service related industry where it very much relied on, you know, a person being in, in a particular place, you know, like a restaurant or, you know, performance venues, you know, all those sorts of things. Uh, from the job board side of the fence, you know, the demand has dried up. And a lot of that demand for the restaurant industry moved to um, delivery. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's a part of hospitality that's still somewhat active in the sense that it's, you know, what you call the back of the room, the people that are cooking and the people are putting things together that there's still demand for that um, because people are doing takeout now. Um, And in some places people are actually dining out, but as we know that, it's 
this is a this is going to be this is an ongoing experiment because for hospitality in particular, those restaurants have been holding on uh, by having dine out. Uh, that's going to change, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, as winter sets on. Exactly. Yeah, a, a lot of the restaurants in New York have basically become kitchens for supply and takeout. Yeah. You know. Yep. Uh, yep. And 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 you're right. I mean, as as uh, weather starts to get bad, I mean, a lot of the restaurants here in Connecticut have put up tents. Um, you know, but I feel so sorry for these. Poor servers who are running in and out and in and out of these mm-hmm. restaurants trying mm-hmm. to serve people, you know? Yeah. Wait, just wait till your first blizzard, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I, but Ice I mean, storm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, going back to what we were talking about at the very beginning about the derecho that hit Iowa, I mean, so it was, it was a horrible catastrophe, but it was a great boon for those companies that do uh, tree services, you know, right. that do cutting. And so these guys are just, you know, working, you know, 18 hour days, seven days a week. And, you know, they're a perfect example of the kind of job that it has to be done in person, you know, and estimates that I've seen say, you know, as much as 70 to 80% of the jobs that are out there are those kinds of jobs. Um, And the question, you know, not, not only for the job board industry, but for the economy is how, you know, they, they've been depressed, you know, things have been put off for a lot of people or they're, they're low staffing or they're doing it in a different way. And the question is, um, how much does it come back at some point when you get a better handle on COVID, you know, and that's right. a big question for job boards, because again, we're tied, we're tied to the hiring part of it. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, some job boards are really focusing on on, you know, if they're a niche site, uh, how flexible or inflexible is the niche? And if it's super inflexible and, and the outlook doesn't look good, they're looking around to see, you know, can we go sideways into another niche? So, yeah, I bet. So, um, just generally speaking, what has been the largest source of revenue for job boards this year? Well, um, so that is a question that I ask and, you know, the number, uh, the, the number one uh, revenue source is still and has been for a long time duration-based job postings. Okay, so no big surprise there. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, what, we have, what we have seen an increase in terms of revenue for the companies are things like um, they're getting more revenue from um, cost per application, so, you know, that uh, employer says, I'm not going to pay for a click. I'm not going to pay for a job view, but I will pay for an application. Um, we're seeing uh, some job boards have managed to sort of skate past a lot of the pain of the last six months because they have a high percentage of their employers on subscriptions. Mm-hmm. I know Dice mentioned this in, their, um, in one of their earnings calls. And, you know, that's great for them for right now, but, you know, at some point those subscriptions are going to come up for renewal. So we'll see what right. happens at that point. Um, and then I guess the, uh, the, a very small percentage of the job boards have relied on a cost per hire model. So basically we're, you know, the employer is paying, you know, how many hires have I made? Um, that's still not a, not a big, a big thing, you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. honestly, still the job board industry is primarily focused on duration based jobs, you know, job postings, uh, job slots, job subscriptions, job packs, all that sort of stuff. And is there a rate war going on in as far as the postings? Uh, (laughs) There's been a rate war going on ever (laughs) since. uh, So, so indeed sort of pivoted from being an aggregator to being a job board around 2011. Right. And when that happened, um, that's when the rate war started. Um, because you know, uh, they will always be able to say, you know, it's, it's cheaper to do a pay-per-click than it is to just pay, you know, $300 for a job posting. Um, and that has driven down the effective rate for job postings. Um, you know, since 2011, it's just, it's keep, it's kept going down and down and down. So, 
So um, how are job boards generating traffic today? Well, it's not hard for job boards to generate traffic right now. Um, okay. And this is true of every recession that I've been through. It's kind of sad to think I've, it's been, I've been through more than one recession, but um, the, you know, when recessions hit, people lose their jobs. And when they lose their jobs, they look for work. And when they look for work, they go to job boards and traffic goes up. So, you know, most job boards have seen traffic climb steadily or, you know, dramatically since, you know, since the pandemic hit. Um, what were some of the key findings overall of your survey this year, and uh, how did those translate from past years? Well, I would say you know one of um, one of the key findings, and and again, this is no big surprise, but it is it is a big change. It's one of the questions I've been asking for years: is you know, what do you view as a as a primary threat to your business? And I give them all sorts of different options. And you know, historically for the last five, six years, uh, it's always been Indeed, um, LinkedIn, and um, competition from other sites. Mm -hmm. um, this year, it was overwhelmingly the pandemic. Yeah, that's, and, that's no surprise. Uh, right, it is no yeah. surprise, but it was you know it was fairly dramatic. Um, the, I think the other big uh, finding for this year is that a lot of sites have had to cut uh, employment either temporarily or permanently. And, um, you know, that is usually a precursor to sites closing. So, you know, when I was talking earlier about culling, mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, I'm sure you remember that um, ZipRecruiter cut their, uh, their staff by 40% and indeed has had a number of layoffs. Right. So it's, you, you can just imagine uh, with the big sites doing that, you know, little sites are doing it as well. The, um, I guess the other thing that's changed, and again, I, this is no surprise given what we've all gone through, but, you know, historically I asked question, the question, you know, do you feel optimistic or pessimistic about, you know, what's going on and what's going to happen for you and your business in the coming year? And then I asked them to talk about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And historically, it's been overwhelmingly optimistic. You know, most people are either somewhat optimistic or very optimistic and just minuscule numbers of people that are pessimistic. And this year, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the people that feel very optimistic dropped dramatically and the people that feel somewhat or very pessimistic jumped up dramatically. Um, and, it, you know, it's just sort of like I think everyone in the industry looked at this and said, this could be a fundamental shift. You know, this is one of those big things that, you know, it's, this is not, this is not the gradual growth of aggregators. This is not, you know, the, the, the gradual change of indeed into being a job board. This is, you know, wham, the big event being dropped on your head. Um, and, you know, I, th I, I think they're right. I think they're, they're right. totally right. But the flip side of it is um, the sites, you know, that, that are, um, in, in, in the industries that are not being decimated and the sites that are, you know, have been historically well run, um, they have a lot of room for optimism because there's a lot of opportunity for growth. You know, whenever there's a recession, things become available and market share opens up to be taken. And, uh, you know, the market, be, you know, market volatility is good if you're looking at trying to grow. Um, it's, you know, if indeed is always like the monster that never moves, uh, that's, that's a drag. If you're trying to get bigger, um, if indeed is having problems, that's good for you. You know, mm -hmm. what advice would you have for folks looking for a job in this crazy market? Well, I think, um, a couple of things. So one thing is I think that you need to be flexible. You need to be willing to um, sort of look outside your normal venue if you want. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are taking advantage of this to move out of jobs that they didn't like and try to move into jobs that they will like. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that said, oh yeah, you know, I'm 
I'm taking online training for this, or I'm getting certified in this or certified in that. Um, it's, that's really know, smart. Yeah. They got, you know, essentially, uh, you're, you're getting kicked out of your rut, whether you like it or not. So you can either, you know, complain about it or you can say, well, okay, I'm going to use this to see if I can make my situation better. Um, I guess the second thing I would say is that job, you know, if you're a job seeker, you actually have access to a lot of information that people even back in 2008 didn't have. Uh, about what is important and what isn't important for employers. Um, you know, what are they hiring for? Uh, what are they looking for? And they and you you also have the added uh, advantage that there are a lot more employers out there now that are not tied into. You must have a bachelor's degree, you know, and six years of previous experience. Uh, and they're more willing to say, you know, what if you take this assessment and it looks really good. Uh, or if you go through this coding boot camp and you get good grades, I'll hire you. Um, I think that's a real shift from like the 2008, 2009 when yep. hiring managers were like, well, let's uh, let's make sure that everybody we hire has an MBA, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> whether they need it or not, because we can do that now. Yep. So uh, that's encouraging to hear that, you know, these folks are loosening up their requirements a little bit uh, to kind of uh, take into account what the hell's going on out there. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, this is, this is just an, an anecdote, but I have a uh, uh, nephew that was literally graduated from college in May and went out to look for work. And, you know, uh, poor guy like me, he had a liberal arts degree, you know, and, so he's going out into the pandemic looking for work. And worst of all, he wants to make a living as a writer, um, you know, and a technical writer. Well, he did uh, a bunch of research, identified a bunch of companies that were already posting jobs for remote workers. And he found a job within about four weeks and, uh, and they moved him to L.A., he was in the office for one day. They shut down the office because of COVID again. And he's been, uh, you know, making a very, very incredible amount of money for, a, you know, a kid right out of school, getting great experience. And, um, you know, it was, it's that, I think that kind of thing can happen now a lot more easily than it could happen 10 years ago. So, yeah, that's, that's really encouraging. So uh, one last question for you. Um, this is something I'd planned on asking and I kind of forgot about it. And, you know, everything in, in TA tech today has to do with AI and machine learning. So mm -hmm. how is, uh, how is artificial intelligence impacting the job board industry? Um, well, there's, there, I guess there are a couple places where it's impacting it, uh, sort of indirectly, you know, most job boards are not, um, companies that have large in-house technical staff. Um, there's certainly exceptions to that. And, you know, and as you get larger and larger, the likelihood that you got a big staff is goes up. But job boards are going to be more like consumers of AI technology that can be dropped into what they're doing. And the focus has been primarily on the search technology and the matching technology, you know, they're sort of mm -hmm. interrelated. And um, that continues to be sort of the holy grail uh, for a lot of sites being able to do a better job of, you know, taking in some um, information from a candidate or information from an employer and processing it and kicking out a job or a candidate that uh, is, a, is a tighter match to what they do. And I mean, that was, you know, some of them are using Google as a as a uh, search engine tool inside their sites um, some of them are you know developing their own uh, most of them are like i said taking components that are coming from elsewhere and adapting them to work for them okay. but i'd say that that's probably the the place that you see the most ai i've seen what you see more in job boards is really interesting adaptations of technology that you know, I, don't, I wouldn't say it was AI specific, but it, um, 
uh, has aspects of AI and, and, you know, some people say, oh, it's machine learning. Some people say, oh, no, it's, some, it's something else, you know. But, uh, you know, I saw an interesting demonstration uh, by a site called uh, Sonic Jobs, where they're essentially using a chatbot interface to have people enter in their resume. Um, and the, using the chatbot makes it incredibly easy. And it's not, you know, compared to going through the typical job board you know, 10-step right. form. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that you tend to see with job boards is there, you know, how can we streamline and, and reduce friction and increase the quality of the output? Well, that certainly makes sense, Jeff, because so many uh, companies now, especially larger, you know, enterprise level companies have a chat bot uh, on their you know, on their own internal job boards mm -hmm. that, um, you know, and you look at uh, HireVue just acquired Alio. Yep. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think the job board or, or the uh, chat bot really makes sense for job boards because, again, like you said, it reduces the friction and people can get in and out in, in a couple of minutes instead of sitting there for an hour cutting and pasting their resume into fields. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And it was the, the other interesting thing about this particular action um, application is that it attempts to solve one of the eternal problems of the job board world, which is how, how does a job board inter, uh, interface with an applicant tracking system in ATS? Because um, ATSs typically don't really care if they work with job boards or not. And of course, the job boards have to. Um, and this, this uh, actually sort of skates past that in a really interesting way. Like I say, it's not, the technology is not so unusual, but the way they apply the technology is pretty unusual. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for taking time to speak with me today here on Total Picture. It's been great to see you. And uh, we will, of course, put links to your website and to your 2020 survey. Mm -hmm. But uh, how can our viewers uh, best get in touch with you? I think the best way to get in touch with me is just to go to my website, jobboarddoctor.com. And there are plenty of little links there uh, saying, contact me, hire me, talk to me. <laughs> and uh, I think at some point you'll, you'll hit on one that will get to me. So great. Well, again, thank you so much. It's great seeing you and uh, best of luck. Okay, great, Peter. Thanks a lot. Thank you. As we look forward to 2021, our goals and aspirations for the new year, one thing is certain. For the foreseeable future, Zoom rules, which means video rules. And that's where I come in. I can help you get to next level video capability and help you deliver professional quality video to your team, your clients, your prospects, and in doing so, build your reach and influence. I can help you create exceptionally well-crafted videos, what I call vital videos. You have a story to tell. Through my skill as an interviewer, I can uncover what makes you unique and how you best project your leadership and values. Video rules, and together, we can create a winning performance. To learn how I can help you level up through video, send me an email, peter at totalpicture.com, Let's start writing a 2021 success story.